Hey guys, Reese here. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for stopping by. Today is a very exciting video because it's a conclusion, the end to a renovation of a duplex I own. So for those of you that know me or have been watching the channel for a little while, I'm a real estate agent, real estate investor here in Columbus, Ohio, and I currently own three duplexes with a partner, hopefully many more to come. And this video is covering the update of my most recent purchase, a duplex that my partner and I are living in one side, renting out the other. And I've shown some updates throughout the you know last months on this property about the numbers, the renovations. And today is a final conclusion video to that project. And I think it should make for quite an entertaining video today. So guys, if you haven't seen any of the previous videos on this property, I will link them down in the description, maybe throw a link up here as well for you guys to check them out after this video. I show the initial walkthrough of the property, you know, when we bought it, I show, you know, the renovation progress, run some numbers on it to what we thought, how much money we would make, um, you know, a few months ago. Those numbers have changed dramatically since then. However, I'll also show quite a bit of footage today in this video as well. So guys, the renovations have been complete for quite some time now, maybe a few months, and we've been working through the refinance process to pull out some cash and finish that Burr method of investing. So we bought, renovated, re-rented, and refinanced. That's what we're currently working on. And so earlier this week, the appraisal finally came back, which gave us the value that the bank will use uh, to refinance the property with, to give us some cash back. And so I feel like right now is a perfect time to make a video kind of concluding this three, four episode series. So guys, if you're interested in seeing before and after pictures and video of this property, what we purchased it at, how much money we invested into the renovation, and the final numbers from a cash flow and value add standpoint, stick around to the end of today's video. I'm sure it will not disappoint and the numbers on this property are looking pretty good. So with that said guys, please go ahead and like and subscribe to my channel and feel free to comment on this video down below. Intro. So guys, brief summary of this property. For those of you that have not watched either of my uh, previous videos on this property, my partner and I bought this property for $160,000 back in June of 2020, last summer. And we bought this property uh, for one main reason. We were currently living in one of our campus rentals. And for those of you that don't know, campus rentals usually turn every you know first week of August. And so, we were running out of time. We didn't want to rent a place to live. So we said, hey, let's look for another place to buy a rental, right? And this place came up through a real estate agent of mine, a colleague. He brought it to us and said, hey, pretty decent deal, off-market deal. Do you guys want it? We ran the numbers and we're like, you know what? This isn't a great deal. It's an okay deal, but it gives us a place to live. We'll make a little cash flow. And we had no better options at that point in time. So we decided to pull the trigger on it. At that point in time, with the amount of money we thought we'd have to invest to renovate and the final ARV, we weren't sure we were gonna be able to refinance the property and pull that cash back out afterwards. And this was because we put 5% down for an owner-occupant loan. We thought, you know, we're gonna invest maybe $30,000. We probably won't even get to the 25% loan to value that's required to refinance. But we decided to pull the trigger. We immediately started renovating one side that was already vacant and partially renovated. And then after you know some heated arguments, threatened lawsuits later, we got the tenants out of the other side and renovated that side as well. We initially had a budget of around $30,000 and this was to renovate both sides, do some exterior maintenance, maybe throw a privacy fence around the property, throw some AC units on there as it was only central heat. And this budget quickly got bumped up to $35,000, then $40,000, and then we kind of blacked out and who really knows where we ended up on the numbers, somewhere between forty dollars and $50,000. I could pull up my QuickBooks, but we're gonna put an estimate in there around $45,000. And so with the $160,000 purchase price, this put us all in around $200,000, dollars $205,000. Looking at area comps, we assumed the value might be around $250,000, and we'd probably get about $1,000 aside in rent 
which would be about the 1% rule, which means you know it would cash flow relatively well. So guys, without further ado, here's the final product. We decided to go ahead and do a little bit more of a higher end renovation on this property than the neighborhood would necessarily support. So we did granite countertops, we did tile floors on one side, new vinyl plank in the other side, we did refinished hardwood floors, gutted the bathrooms, everything, right? And we made them pretty nice. And the reason we did this is because although the rents might be capped at, you know, whatever right now, no matter how nice we make the property, five years from now, when the neighborhood is better, the nicer renovation will allow us to still get those top end rents. And then 10 years from now, we'll still be competing for average range rents, even though we haven't renovated the property in 10 years. And so guys, the best part, the numbers on this property, where did we end up? How much money did we make on this deal? And how much money do we continue to make each and every month from cash flow? Well, drum roll, please. Maybe sound effects here, maybe not. Uh, <laughs> appraisal came in at $300,000, which compared to our initial estimate of 250 is a pretty substantial increase. Now this was due to a couple reasons. One, the market in this particular neighborhood in Columbus as a whole is just going up like crazy. You know, the whole United States is going up like crazy. Housing shortages specifically in Columbus are driving up, you know, that lower price range property and rents are continuing to go up as well. Now, in addition, we also filed a tax abatement on this property, which adds a tremendous amount of value. So what that means is we purchased this property for $160,000 and file the tax abatement. Because this is an opportunity zone, we're eligible for a 15 year 100% tax abatement, which means our property taxes are locked at a value of $160,000 for the next 15 years, even if we were to resell this home today at 300,000. That means that can be transferred between owners, giving the next person the ability to spend more on the property because their taxes won't go up. So guys, that's an increase in value of about $100,000 over the amount of money we have in the deal. We're in at about 200, 205, we appraised at 300. Best part is, part of the Burr strategy, that refinance is, we're refinancing at 70% loan to value. We could do 75, but the interest rate goes up pretty substantially. So we're keeping it at 70% loan to value. And the interest rate on that new debt is 2.65% or what we in the industry like to call pretty much free money. <laughs> so 70% of a $300,000 value, less our current loan of $150,000, leaves us with an available equity to pull out of $60,000, less some refinance fees. Cool thing is, is because we're in an opportunity zone, the bank does $500 closing costs instead of the traditional one or 2%. So substantial amount of money saved on that as well. That means 100% of our money invested is being returned to us through a refinance. Pretty dang cool. That means all of our returns are pretty much infinite here on out through cash flow because there's no money left in the deal. Now, even after we refinance and have more debt on the property, we still cash flow substantially. And now I'm going to go ahead and transfer over to my computer screen here, and we're going to run through the numbers from a cash flow perspective in my little spreadsheet I use when I'm analyzing the deal. So let's pop on over there. All right, let's take a look at this fancy spreadsheet here. Purchase price is our appraised value of $300,000. The rest of this down payment required to close total and deal doesn't really matter on a refinance. That's more of just a purchase. So we have down here the rent roll. And that shows that one side is currently vacant. That's the side I'm living on. The other side's rented at $1,300. And then pro forma, that's what we will get once we move out of the one side. We'll probably be around $1,300 a side. We have the current expenses and the pro forma expenses. So in Columbus, water is about $20 an occupant per month. Six occupants would be $120. Vacancy is 5%, although we really sit closer to zero. But we'll put that in there just for budgeting. And then the property taxes here, we're going to keep at $160,000 times the 2.22% property tax rate here in Columbus because of that tax abatement. Otherwise, our property taxes would go through the roof at a $300,000 valuation down the road. So that property uh, tax abatement, super duper helpful here. $75 for insurance, 
Maintenance and CapEx will be low because we did a complete renovation, but I include it there just for budgeting. And then finally, we have lawn care, 30 bucks a month. That really is only in the summer and it's more like 60 bucks a month, but I spread it out over annual, so 12 months, $30. Now we see the current cash flow uh, with one side vacant is negative $330. That's pretty awesome though, because that means me and my buddy are paying about $330 a month to live in a three bedroom renovated apartment. Super nice. Now pro forma, once we get the other side rented, we'll be making about $420 per unit in cash flow or $842 a month. That is with the new debt down here, 70 loan to value, 2.65 interest rate, 30 year amortization. So even after the refinance, we are still making $850 a month. That's at $1,300 a month in rent. So even if we can't get 1,300 again, we change it down to 12, we're still getting $760 a month. Pretty crazy. Cash on cash return does not apply because no money's in the deal. So it's more like an infinite return. Pretty cool. That uh, just goes to show the power of value add real estate where we can pull out $60,000 and still be cash flowing at least $700 a month. Pretty crazy. So there you have it guys, a very successful end to this property, you know, given the little bit of a rough start we had with a lot of tenant issues on the other side, you know, arguments, screaming at 4 a.m., threatened lawsuits, it was somewhat traumatic. <laughs> However, very successful end from a financial standpoint, very good property in a great up and coming neighborhood. Super happy about this deal. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoy seeing the numbers on these properties, the transparency. And I hope this encourages you guys to go ahead and buy your first rental property. You know, the market is super competitive right now, pretty much anywhere you look. However, if you find a deal that needs some hard work, some sweat equity put into it to add value, you can still get a good deal that cash flows at the end of the day. So guys, once again, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope to have another property here for you guys soon to watch as we go through this process. Again, um, something in the works, won't tell you guys about it yet because it may not come through, but hopefully I'll have another property here shortly. So guys, thanks again. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Please remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel for more uh, real estate related content, and leave a comment down below. I love talking to you guys. So thanks again. See you in the next one. Bye.